You know, uh, you mentioned in uh, our previous conversation as well um, about the a lot of the, uh, I guess, focus in the book. It encompasses those three areas of words, moves, and foods. And we're yeah. quite comfortable with patient education. We're quite comfortable with, yes, we uh, prescribe movement and educate patients on movement. But the food thing is probably an area where we're not as comfortable with. Talk, talk about that for just a second, just to help people understand where you're coming from. And boy, we didn't do a, a, a great diligence there just to, to, so if people are reading it in there, you're like, where is the food section? I agree with you. It's a very small section in chapter seven um, where we talked about, you know, lifestyles and the, the lifestyle impact. And so, you know, foods is a big area now. And, and if you are listening, you will hear all kinds of references to, um, you know, the neuroimmune system. All right. Now, from what I know now, because I think I'm smarter than I actually wrote the book. And if I had to revise some things, this is an area where I would revise heavily, uh, is when you're starting to understand the foods element to helping someone with persistent pain, you know, it's still that, you know, well, are we dealing with an inflammation mechanism? You know, is this somebody systemically inflamed and their diet is, you know, maybe constituting too much sugar, you know, too much processed food, um, too much flour thing, you know, the, the things that really increase inflammatory markers within our system. All right. Now you've, I, I have had too many people come back and tell me, you know, cause now it's hip, right. To keto and all this stuff. And I'm on an anti-inflammatory diet and, you know, I've taken out all this and I don't feel at all better. And I love when they tell me that. I'm like, ah, shoot. Okay. So you're not necessarily dealing with something that may be inflammatory based, you know, what other things uh, the foods area has is hormones. I mean, you know, and, and really about hormone balancing relative to diet is really macronutrient balancing, you know, how much fat, protein, and carbs should this person be in taking? Because if they're underserving a certain macronutrient, that could drive your freaking hormones all over the place. You know, your insulin, your cortisol, your thyroid hormones. So when you hear people aren't really dealing or getting responses with an anti-inflammatory diet, I can tell you it's probably not an inflammatory mechanism. Now, hormones is a different area. Um, and that may be more, you know, again, the specificity of balancing somebody in that area could be looking more detailed at what is the macronutrients they are consuming and what is the balance of that. You know, and that third area in foods, you know, is, is the whole idea behind um, underlying infection. You know, they may not have a huge infection where they're running fevers, um, but they, they may be carrying little bugs inside of them that's actually offering, you know, more persistence of symptoms. And so how you do some good cleanses of that and things like that in order to um, cleanse the GI tract of certain bugs. So that whole foods area is a big area, you know, and you're dealing with three mechanisms within that area and certainly not one diet fits all, you know. Um, and when do you even pull that out? I, I mean, you know, I think sometimes you can run some screens on people just because they're having so many other symptoms that make you think, let's go there sooner than later. Um, but, you know, I think from a OT and a PT and a chiropractic perspective, I mean, we had to do the due diligence and did we give the right education? Do we have them on the right movement program? You know, and make sure we don't, you know, get ourselves too caught up in the foods without dealing with the words and the moves, right? Hear the um, entire episode for free on iTunes, Spotify, other favorite podcast players, or go to mechanicalcareforum.com.